Hi guys, well today we're going to be having a look at the Aorus GTX 1080 Extreme Edition. Now this card arrived late to the 10 series party, but it has the intention there of stealing the spotlight. Now in a very similar way to the Amp Extreme, this card here, it bears a gigantic heatsink and actually holds one of the biggest overclocks among the 1080s. And of course, you know, with that overclock, it means that we might just have in our hands today one of the fastest 1080s on the market. The Extreme Edition carries a weighty triple wind force cooling design with some additional elements such as a copper backplate. Fans of RGB lighting will also be pleased to know that Extreme utilizes RGB spectrum so you can customize the theme. Now this card here is regarded as a flagship and on paper it is rather powerful and so we have a price tag to suit. Oddly enough in the UK it is 666, over in the US it is around about $800. So yeah, that spare kidney might just come in handy. So stick with us guys as we check out this uh, card in plenty of detail today, looking at all those aspects and then showing what the performance is like towards the end. Okay, well let's start by having a quick look at the packaging. This is the box that our card arrives in, pretty standard really for an Nvidia graphics card. If we just spin that over, you can see strong emphasis on the cooling solution that our Extreme arrives with as there are a few different design implementations with this particular cooler. They have a few tricks there up their sleeve. Now inside the box, first of all, we have this nice uh, folder here. This has our bundled accessories. If I just open that out and shake the contents out, we can have a look at what is included. So first of all, we have the warranty detailing there. So uh, just need to turn that over, follow those steps in order to get your four year warranty. We have a quick start guide, which helps you to get up and running if you're unfamiliar. There is only a few steps, uh, but that might be handy. Driver CD with the software, uh, so NVIDIA drivers and also the Aorus uh, LED software. Uh, those will become obsolete after a certain amount of time, uh, so it is always best to go directly onto the websites and download the latest. Get a nice badge there for your case. And then we have a dual 6-pin to 8-pin connection. That is the adapter for the PCI Express. And so, you know, pretty sparse really when you, know, you consider that how much we're spending on a graphics card. These are the bundled accessories that we get. Would have been a nice touch really to have a high bandwidth SLI bridge included with this card, but perhaps uh, that is something for them to consider in the future. We get this... Uh, Nice cardboard here just to reinforce it and keep the card nice and uh, steady while it is in transit. And then you can see that it is in that uh, anti-static bag just to keep it nice and protected. Okay, and here is Extreme in all its beauty. This card is colossal in size and Aorus has really fine-tuned that styling to make it as appealing as possible. Taking center stage is of course the triple wind force configuration and later on we'll take a closer look at the finer details of this cooler and all the components underneath. So externally we have this aggressive styling which consists of a metal shroud with some excellent engineering. And the only disappointment is that you won't see all this great work because the top side of this card faces the bottom of the case. Now we are in the age of RGB lighting and therefore this card carries with it some RGB customization. And you can modify the colors and the animation effects by using RGB fusion software. Now we don't have a reference 1080, but right next to that 980, you can just see how colossal that card is. And so it's only right that we take a quick look at the dimensions, which will obviously help you guys establish whether or not it will fit in your case. So for the length, Extreme is 285 millimeters. For the width, you're looking at 125 millimeters. And then the height is 60 millimeters. And so this is a big card and you will need sufficient space there inside your case in order to house it. Now this card does indeed come with a factory overclock applied to it compared to the reference the founders edition and so there is a bump there in the frequencies. The base clock is sat at 1784 and that boosts up to 1936 MHz and the memory clock operates at 10400 MHz. And so those figures there make it one of the fastest 1080s out there and later on we'll test whether or not this is true. Now the 1080 is designed for and capable of ultra high def and as such it arrives with 8 gig of GDDR5X and with Extreme it is also PCI Express 3.0 compliant, it is DirectX 12 ready and supports OpenGL 4.5. 
Extreme will occupy three spaces on your board and two on your case, so it is advisable uh, to check if you have enough room. Now on this back panel here, we have a nice selection of gold-plated ports. Available here is one dual-link DVI-D, giving you up to 3K, triple display port 1.4s, those can give you up to 8K at 60Hz, and we also have one HDMI 2.0, and that offers 4K at 60Hz. And to top that off, we also get two additional HDMI 2 ports at the very end of the card, which are designated for VR support. And so you're still able to use a VR device and have all those ports that are on the back panel available for your monitor. Now the Founders Edition of 1080 requires a 500 watt power supply and arrives with a single 8 pin connection. And with our Extreme, we need the same 500 watt, which isn't too bad at all. However, we do need to use twin 8 pin connections for the power delivery. We also get LED indicators there to tell us if a PCI Express cable is not properly connected to the card and those LEDs will blink if there is unstable voltage from the power supply. Along the edge of the card we have some additional LEDs which notify whether the fans are spinning or not and the Aorus logo illuminates when the card has power. This lighting there can be tweaked in the RGB Fusion software and it offers up to 16.8 million colours. The usual SLI ports are present on this card, allowing you there to pair up with multiple cards. However, with such a price tag as Extreme, we would have liked to see an SLI high bandwidth bridge included in the bundle. Now, such a bridge will effectively double the bandwidth from 1GB a second, which we had there on the 9 series, up to 2GB a second. Now just flipping extreme on the reverse there, we've got this large metal back plate which protects the PCB from getting scratched or from flexing. And that plate has a nice big Aorus logo which is LED ready. And you can also see that where the GPU sits, on the back here we've been given some copper treatment. So not only is the front being given copper contact as we're going to see in a moment, but the back side also benefits from this type of cooling which is said to improve and you know, drive down those temperatures. Right guys, well that cooler has now been detached from the card and this is the solution which Aorus are using. So essentially what we have is a trio of 100mm double ball bearing fans and you can see that middle fan sits lower allowing those fans to, to overlap and this causes the card to take up less space on the overall dimensions. And that middle fan also spins in the opposite direction, counterclockwise, which is said there to optimise the airflow. And as can be expected, these fans here will stop spinning if the system is in an idle state below a specific load. And so Aorus are claiming that this is their best design yet, and we will be finding out if this is true very soon. And those fans sit on top of this enormous twin heatsink design using six composite copper heat pipes. And you can clearly see how extensive that copper base plate is. It not only covers the GPU, but also the memory chips. With that cooler off the card, we can now check out the PCB, which actually has a special aerospace grade coating. So Extreme uses a 12 phase design, which is all digital, and we also get ultra durable components with Titan X grade chokes and caps, which is surely the, a sign of reassurance. So at the very heart of 1080 is the NVIDIA GP104. So that uses a 16 nanometer process and it is based on Pascal architecture. And that GPU has been modified with a factory overclock and the memory that sits around it has also been boosted too. And so that should help the increase the performance. And next we're gonna to go to that performance to see what our extreme has to offer. So for the games, we're going to be using Battlefield 1, The Witcher 3, Gears of War 4 and Titanfall 2. And for each of these games, we're going to be running 1080p and 4K for the resolution, cranking that detail right up to Ultra. So we have a good representation there of both ends of the spectrum. To capture our footage, we will be using the Epifan AVIO 4K, which allows us to independently capture the gameplay there without the GPU or the system taking a hit. Over in the full review on Vortex.net, we'll be taking a closer look at other games and also comparing this card here to others so be sure to check that out and while we check out these games we're also going to have GPUs that they're running in the background to pick up on the max GPU temperature so keep a look out for that towards the end so let's begin
Okay, and while we're in game, we'll just get a quick reading of the sound levels that are coming from those cooling fans. And by the way, this is on auto, and the fan speed is around 49%.
Okay, and if we just come out of Titanfall 2, we can check out that uh, max GPU temperature to see what it peaked out at. So here is the temperature, and this is notably cooler than other 1080s that we've had a look at. So that in a nutshell is the 1080 Extreme from Aorus. Now where do we begin with this card? Well, it is one of the fastest 1080s on the market, showing the podium there with Galax and Colourful, some lesser known brands. And so uh, this uh, is faster here than the Zotac Amp Extreme and also the Strix Gaming OC. And that factory overclock there to the GPU and the memory means that you're going to be able to enjoy your uh, favourite games with even more FPS. But this is actually bolstered by another great point. All of us here are using the GPU gauntlet with uh, the extreme cards and so the chips inside here are cherry picked for the very best performance and so it's likely that we're going to be able to push those numbers up even further with a manual overclock and so be sure to check out the full review uh, to see the result of that because we're going to be doing a manual overclock on top of the factory one. Now when we're talking about temperatures this card again is a leader in its category among the 1080s we found it to be uh, four degrees cooler than the Amp Extreme and also the Strix cards and yet this one here is running at faster frequencies. So that whole design, you know, with the extra cooling on the reverse of the car, that copper panel and the alternating fan, they seem to provide a bit of an edge there over the competition. And Aorus there have done a great job, haven't they, with the styling. I don't know what you guys think of it, but I really do think it looks the business. And you may have seen our social media channels. Uh, we've posted various images over there on different social media channels. You know, as soon as we opened the box for this card, and we just took one look, we knew that those needed to be shared, those pictures. And so the design is very good, and uh, it lends itself also to having those additional HDMIs at the end there, in case you want to go down that VR route, and you want to free up those ports there, in case you're using HDMI for your displays. Now, the footprint is obviously one of those factors which you're going to need to kind of take into account with Extreme. You know, it's not just Extreme in the speed and performance, but also... Uh, the size and the weight and of course the cost is reflective of this too now having the best is going to cost you but obviously there is uh, the reassurance of a four-year warranty which is quite generous and that is going to probably sway a lot of people now one thing i do want to mention is that uh, you know spending such amount of cash on this card here you don't expect to have to go out and buy a high bandwidth sli bridge with such a premium product, we expect those type of extras, such as a, a high bandwidth SLI bridge, we expect it to be included in the bundle, and it really should be. And so that's all for me today, guys. Be sure to check out the full review for even more benchmarks, more analysis, and that manual overclock. That link is going to be on the screen and in the description. Please let me know what you guys think of this card in the comments box below. Take care, and I will see you guys very soon.